And that commission could be the same thing. It could be a percentage of the sales price. It could be a retainer like an attorney. It could be an hourly rate. All of those things the buyer could charge or the buyer's agent could charge their buyer, okay? Now, what terminates the buyer's representation? We have already touched on this. Since this uh, agency is created by the form, the, the, how do we kill that form? Same thing. If it is fulfilled, you actually found them a house, they've made an offer, and it closed. Your buyer's agency agreement, just like the listing agency, has to have an expiration, cannot have a perpetual listing. You could agree mutually to terminate your buyer's agency with that buyer client. Maybe you all of a sudden realize you guys don't like, uh, you guys are in conflict with your football teams and you don't want to talk to each other over that. You can agree if the buyer's agent, uh, if the buyer breaches the contract. Oh, I want to go back to this. What does this word right here mean? Mutual. Means you could, both parties have to agree. It's the same thing that terminates a listing agreement. Let's go back and see if we can find it. Mutual consent. That would also terminate a listing agreement. However, the word mutual means both parties. One party could say no. I have, in several occasions, told my seller, I am not terminating our listing. Even though you like New England Patriots, and I like the Indianapolis Colts, and now we're mortal enemies, I don't care. You signed a six-month contract. I am listing the property. And I had an open house yesterday that was attended by six people who potentially could be writing an offer today so we both get paid. No, I am not going to uh, consent to terminate this listing. I put a lot of time and effort in it, and now I want compensated for that. Now, understand that it's mutual consent. And you guys can agree on anything. He could go, well, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. How about I give you $1,000 to compensate you for all the time and effort and you release me? Okay, I'll do that. Or here's what could happen in the real world. The seller says, okay, don't, just, don't do that. Don't agree to release me. And then just makes it really hard on me. Oh, no, sorry, can't show the house. It's dirty. Oh, no, so sorry. Oh, no. And eventually the listing agent's like, you know what? I'm tired of dealing with this butthole. Let's just let it go. So while it is mutual and either party could say no, the other side could really make it hard enough that it actually happens, okay? So terminating is the same thing here. Mutual agreement. If one party dies, if the buyer actually dies, understand that it's going to be hard to get him approved for a loan if he dies, all right? All right, so that is the chapter that is dealing with the actual agency agreements and how they get created. So keep in mind that those agency agreements are actually more protective of the agent to ensure that they actually get paid. The one is I get paid no matter what, and that goes all the way down to, geez, I have to bring the buyer to actually get the listing credit, all right? So think about all of that stuff. I would recommend that you do the uh, questions down here right below in the next chapter. And then there are questions in the book as well. Uh, remind you, if you have any questions other than that, or you just want to chit chat or talk about real estate, I'm always available. Just email me at Raymond at realuniversity.com. And until then, I'll see you at the next chapter.